Okay, let's uh, uh, talk about FDII, which you'll notice uh, is referring to foreign derived intangible income. Foreign derived intangible income. Uh, I have a, a simple example up there. Uh, product sales of 300 to U.S. customers, 200 to foreign customers for, US, for use outside the U.S. Uh, cost of sales and allocable expenses, uh, 500 of sales in total, 250 of cost of sales and expenses, uh, gives 250 of company-wide income uh, after uh, cost of goods sold and expenses. Uh, the question is, how much benefit is there? You know, just roughly, how is this, this calculated? This, we say, is foreign-derived intangible income. Congress, in thinking about what excess income there is outside the United States or this income inside the United States that should receive this benefit, Congress is thinking about income attributable to intangibles being very movable. It's easy to move intangible assets from one legal entity to another. Now, again, how it's done uh, and what the tax consequences might be of the move, that's something that we can talk about uh, later on, uh, uh, both in the transfer pricing discussion and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the following week where we try to bring all these things together and talk about how they interact in in, uh, uh, in a hypothetical situation. But Congress was thinking about this income from intangibles. Now, does income from intangibles sound like something that is really an objectively uh, determined figure? Or does this sound pretty subjective, figuring out what the value of uh, intangibles are and how much uh, net income you're going to earn from them? Does that sound objective or subjective? Yeah, terribly subjective. You know, who knows? OK, so Congress came up with a formula to just arbitrarily say, this is how we calculate it. We don't care whether in the particular situation it makes sense or doesn't make sense. This is what we're going to do. So what they did was they said, we will calculate intangible by looking to the tangible assets. We will look to the tangible assets. We will say, OK, take the value of the tangible assets multiply times 10%, and that'll be a nominal or assumed return from the tangible assets and whatever activities are being conducted in connection with those assets. And everything else will be attributable to intangible. If we have a, a US company and it has you know, manufacturing operations, and it has a plant uh, with machineries and people in it and so on. If we have that and some of the product that is being produced from this plant within the United States is exported, we're going to look at this and we're going to just say, what is the adjusted basis of those assets? Multiply times 10%, and that number, which is the return from tangible, gets subtracted from the total income, and the difference is intangible, is the income from intangible uh, assets. It's just a sledgehammer approach, a bright line test, calculation, I should say, not a test, uh, to come up with a number. So if after subtracting off the 10% uh, the, uh, 
we, uh, we then uh, uh, we subtract off the 10%. Notice in the example, adjusted basis of tangible depreciable fixed assets was 700. 700 times 10%, last time I looked, was 70. So we subtract 70 from the 250 of income, and we get 180. Simple, bright line approach. Then, because that's total, or that's on total sales, both into the US and uh, to customers overseas, we then have to calculate, OK, how much of that 180 will be the foreign derived intangible uh, income? And we, again, just make a simple proportion uh, in order to come up with a number. We multiply that 180 times the proportion of net income, which is attributable to foreign, uh, over the total and we come up with a, a number, which in this case is 72. The rules, uh, and this is section 250, we're talking about section 250. The rules say that, of course, because you're uh, in, you have all this gross income and expenses and that within the US tax filing, if we're going to give a lower effective tax rate, we need to give an additional deduction. Multiplying that 72 times the tax rate, or times the, uh, the amount of the deduction, 37.5%, uh, gives you a deductible amount which, gets, which causes you to get to that 13.125%, which was shown on an earlier slide. Section 250 gives you the computation for this FDII deduction, and it's this very broad computation bright line. Yes? Where does 37.5? Uh, that comes right in the statute. Oh, oh, 37 and a half is the foreign derived 50% of global intangible low taxed income. That's, that's about guilty. Oh, and 250 it has stuff about guilty too. Uh, uh, right. Global yeah. Uh, when I talk about this formula for coming up with the amount of tangible, you know, income uh, return, the 10% of the tangible assets, uh, this is common to both the uh, FDII and the guilty. The, the formulas are essentially the same. And that difference between the 37.5% that you saw there, which is the 37.5% up here, that's what creates the 13.125. And the 50% you referred to, which relates to guilty, that's what causes the 10.5% that uh, guilty uh, results in. The definition of intangibles in this is not to IP, right? It's basically if you're operating. Actually, there is no definition yeah. of intangibles because all it says is take your total net income from these activities, subtract off the tangible the tangible portion, yeah. and therefore whatever's remaining is intangible. So there is no definition of intangible. So regardless of your line of business, you are going to have it. Yeah. Regardless of everything else. I mean, you may, uh, you may be uh, doing something which has no technology at all. So if you are <laughs> a tech-heavy, IP-heavy organization, is this ah. helping you out because now you're only having that 10% account? OK, now you're asking something really interesting. Now, notice this subtraction of the uh, deemed intangible, uh, the deemed uh, uh, tangible income. Notice that subtraction. The higher that is, the higher the subtraction, the higher the adjusted basis of your tangible assets, the lower the benefit is down at the bottom. So this is actually 
discouraging additional U.S. investment in a manner of speaking because to the extent you increase your tangible asset base, you're reducing the amount of your FDII deduction. Now, I said this same formula is for guilty as well. Well, gee, uh, when we get to guilty, which will be next, we'll see that whatever that 10% of tangible is, okay, that's free of guilty. That will qualify for the zero tax in the U.S. when dividends are paid under the participation exemption. So to the extent we increase our asset base outside the United States, we lower our current guilty tax and we're better off. Does this make sense? Well, understandable. You know, does it make sense? Well, maybe, maybe not. But why it's understandable is that there's a logic which has permeated transfer pricing concepts and taxation generally for the last hundred years or so that if a company is really doing actual activities and owns assets and does whatever it does then it should it should benefit from those assets and activities because they were its own so to recognize that companies that are, have legitimate businesses outside the United States that really do have actual ass, assets, they have uh, their own manufacturing facilities or whatever, that that's legitimate activity. You shouldn't be penalizing them for that. And as a result, any appropriate income from that should be allowed this territorial tax benefit of the participation exemption when the earnings are eventually repatriated through dividends to the United States. So there's absolutely logic as to why it's this way. But of course what it does is that it's one more encouragement to actually move something and have real jobs and physical assets in that other country, you know, in some other country outside the U.S. Uh, clearly, their, their overall goal is to try to discourage uh, pushing business into foreign companies, but they have not achieved it. And these kinds of things, which are, it's understandable why they're there, but the reality is that it, uh, it's an encouragement it's more motivation to move assets and profits outside of the U.S. Okay, so just to summarize that simple example that we just, uh, just talked about, uh, the difference between 21, which would be the, uh, the tax if uh, there were no FDII deduction, the uh, difference is you know, roughly uh, what uh, uh, five and five point six seven, the tax calculated using that uh, FDII deduction. This is uh, this is the uh, encouragement of more activity uh, in the United States. Now uh, I haven't mentioned it, but uh, there's a new term which you should at least have heard of and it's referred to as QBI. Okay, Qualified Business Asset Investment. Easier to say QBI. That is that adjusted basis of the tangible assets. 10% uh, of QBI, that's going to be the subtraction uh, from total income to get to that uh, uh, intangible uh, amount. And this QBI is relevant, again, for both FDII and for the guilty that we continually refer to. Uh, one thing which is kind of uh, interesting before we go to the next slide, the item at the bottom 
income earned through foreign branches. A US company can, of course, operate through offices and facilities within the United States. A US company can also qualify to do business in some other country and set up manufacturing facilities in a branch because their focus was on encouraging investment within the United States. They specifically said that if you have production activities inside a, a branch outside the United States, there would be no FDI, uh, FDII benefit for that. Now, again, uh, gee, if instead of a branch, we operated this production activity not in a branch in country uh, A, but we set up a, a country A company to do this activity, well, gee, now we're qualified for guilty. You know, for the, we're qualified for uh, half of the income to be taxed under guilty and have to never be taxed at all. So we, just by incorporating the branch, we go from 21% tax on whatever income we generate to 10 and a half uh, maximum uh, on, uh, on that, uh, that income from that same activity. Does that make sense? Well, not, uh, not a lot, but again, this is, uh, this is what the rules are. When you say FDII benefit? I'm talking about the FDII deduction, which brings the effective tax rate on the income from manufacturing something in the U.S. and selling it to a customer outside the U.S. The, a, a deduction uh, that brings the net income, or the tax on that, down to a 13.125% uh, uh, rate from the 21% rate that would otherwise apply. Mm 